Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black heart sign and black end asking you to hit that share button. Thanks if you hit share or like or subscribe. Either one. Uh, this is a religious message, but it's also a practical message. So if you have listened to the other ones, then listen to this one. Hear me out because I can't put it, push anything down your throat. But what I'm going to talk about now is something that is based on all of our faiths. This is something that even polytheistic people may agree with us on. Even though I don't agree with the polytheist about the existence of many gods, naturally you all know that. So let me get started and get to the point, help you out a little bit. I start with the name of Allah. I testify that there is no deity to worship except Allah and that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, peace be to him, is his slave servant and messenger. I seek refuge from Allah. From um, I seek Allah's refuge rather from misleading anyone and being misled, deceiving anyone and being deceived, and from oppressing anybody and being oppressed, even if I don't like the person. I seek Allah's refuge from doing any of these things to them and being done these things by them. So to get right to it, I mentioned the Lois Lane syndrome in a previous message um, that I entitled, Why You Better Listen to LAR Movement About Settling. Now I'm going to explain it more in depth. In the Lois Lane message, uh, well, in the Lois Lane syndrome, first you have to understand the original storyline of uh, the whole Superman story, be it the comics or the movies, either one. Uh, it was created, I think, during the Depression or right before the Depression. The whole story and the characters therein uh, were created around this time and in this context. Lois Lane at that time represented a new type of woman. She's not a new type of woman today. We've all seen her. But at that time, she represented a new type of woman. Opinionated, headstrong, independent. Okay? She was a journalist. She had her own career. She got her own salary. She had her own money. That's fine. But even as she was, she still kept getting herself into trouble and becoming the damsel in distress requiring a rescue that literally was out of this world she worked with Clark Kent who as far as she knew was a human being a man a strong man but not a crap uh, uh, not a crap talking man a junk talking man he was mild mannered he was not a wimp he just wasn't one of those that got up in your face talking that stuff he didn't thump his chest no gorilla displays So, she didn't want him. That wasn't happening. Because she knew about the existence of Superman, she just did not know that her Clark Kent was Superman. Now, she interviewed Superman and found out that he was from another planet, and that's why he could do all the stuff he could do. He was not human. He was from another star system, let alone another planet. But she was so impressed by what he could do and what could not be done to harm him that she preferred an alien over a human being. Do you understand now? That's the Lois Lane syndrome. The Western woman has it, but it's good for us if the white community suffers because their women have it. That's great. I've been praying for this. You should too. All oppressors deserve something like that. And they are an oppressive society. You can take the individuals as they come. I'm not saying otherwise. But their society is oppressive. That's the end of it. So when it comes down to it. You're dealing, brothers, with Western black women that are trained to judge you by standards. That don't make any damn sense. Not only are the standards unrealistic and unfitting for a human being, but they are blasphemous. These are standards that actually are in defiance of what God has promised. God promised he's going to test everybody. He's going to test us with ease and with hardship. We're all going to experience both. Man and woman. He's going to test men and women with each other. How so? Well, there's the ease. But there's also the hardship. And part of the hardship is that every man is going to have something that women don't want and every man's going to lack something that women want and vice versa. Every woman will have something men don't want and every woman will lack something that men want. No one will be perfect to anyone else, not even to themselves. Will not happen. 
we understand this. We're taught this at a young age. We know that it is not realistic uh, or even humane to judge women by the same standards that uh, Lois Lane judges Clark Kent by and Superman by. Nobody set up and told these women this. The fairy tales, actually, um, that were very old in Europe before Disney turned them into movies, only reinforced this notion. That's all it was. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that no man came up with these fairy tales to begin with. And so the notion becomes that she has to be a damsel in distress. You got to come and rescue her. She ain't helping you none. She's just requiring your protection. That's it. So I say to you, you must understand that in the Western world, whether it is the white woman or the black woman, the black woman is more obvious about it in the beginning, but the Western woman in general is going to judge you by Lois Lane standards. Your humanity is enough to make them disgusted with you. And that's blasphemous. That's the same thing as looking God in the face and saying, you didn't do good enough. And starting to blame, point a finger at God and starting to blame God. That's really what they're doing indirectly. You need to know this. Because this is one of the reasons why it is that you're going to have to get passports if you can, if you're trying to build any sort of legacy or leave anything behind to anybody that's related to you. You have to leave because the Western black woman and the Western white woman are both going to do this to you. And when you are human and you're in that, you're human, your humanity with its flaws and weaknesses and limits will inevitably show at some point they're going to get sick and tired of you and bounce. And they're going to even try to penalize you for it. How dare you get sick now? How dare you forget this now? How dare you run out of resources now? As if there's a good time for any of these things. And if you try to prepare yourself before, for these days before they happen, try to set something aside, they're going to say, how dare you be this cheap now? I want what I want now. Spend this money on that now. And then later on, when you don't have any reserves for these times that are inevitably going to come, that's when they're going to say, how dare you lose this now, get sick now, lose these resources now. How dare you get laid off now? I'm out. And that's what will happen. You can see this in BGS's uh, last post. He posted a skit that was played by Maya Angelou and another actor back in 1968. She comes home, he's reading the paper, looking at the wanted ads. Oh, you looking for a job, huh? She just keeps on talking, and this man never says a word the whole time, finally gets up, bounces, grabs a suitcase, and she's left by herself because she ran him off. Now, granted, a woman has a right to want a man to, to, to get a job, but see, part of not having a Lois Lane syndrome is that you understand that with, if you insist on living in your enemy's country, you're going to be treated like the enemy. If you insist on living where he has power over you, he's going to flex that power over you. And this is why it is that in our religion there's a concept called hijra, which means migration, flight. It can be emigration or immigration, either one. Assalamu alaikum. Ki hal hai? Alhamdulillah, tike. So uh, we have this concept in our faith because of that. Because your enemies are going to oppress you. And we are people who are being oppressed. So if, if your lady decides that she wants to stay where you're being oppressed because she's not being oppressed as much as you, that's really when you need to leave. Because your leaving is a test for her. If she's actually willing to follow you when you're leading responsibly, she will leave with you. Do you understand now? Do you see that? You're going somewhere where your enemy has less control or where they're doing less to you. Like what I did. And my first ex, the American, was not going to go. She was not going to do it. Now she's looking for gigs here, but the economy's changed and her field is not as in demand. But she wasn't going to do this in the beginning. I came here when my field was in demand. It still is. But even when they stop hiring from outside, I'm still sought after. Not because I'm just that good per se. 
um, well, not because I'm better than others, but because I simply, um, on one hand, I'm very fortunate and I want to give God the credit for this. And on the other hand, I've tried to at least avoid bad decisions like not going and not striking while the iron is hot. That's the issue. She did not choose to follow. Even when I was right. Even when I agreed with her, she did not choose to follow. Because she was trained and socialized. You brothers must understand that you are being judged by standards that are not only unfair to humanity, they are blasphemous against God. You must realize that. And that's why you must get out of the West in its entirety. You must leave alone the Western white woman and you must leave alone the Western black woman and you must leave alone the Westernized Latina and you must leave alone the Westernized Asian woman. You must leave all of them behind because in their mind, how dare a man come with any kind of trials and limits and flaws and human weaknesses that might be a test for her. What she's really saying is, how dare God even test me with this? What they're saying is they resent God for testing them, even though he promised that he was going to test people ahead of time. That's what you're dealing with. And that's why I titled this one, The Lowest Lane Syndrome and It's Blasphemy. I'm hoping that this helps out. Brothers, if you've heard this message, I'm not addressing this to the women. Because they don't, um, some do listen and I can't stop them anyway. And if they really mean well, they'll take this to the women and say, look, this is what they're talking about. We're driving them away. Cut the shit out. Forgive me for my foul language, but that's the, generally speaking, that's the way they would talk. <laughs> Probably would curse more than I do. But I'm addressing this to you, brothers, so that you can articulate when you are in these conversations with women that matter enough to you to at least respond to them, you can articulate very well what the point is, why brothers are bouncing, why they're getting out, why you getting your passport, why you saving up to fly even if it's economy, why you trying to get some kind of property in another country that you could rent out, why you trying to do this, that, and the other. You can at least come up with that. You can at least say to them, this is what's happening, this is what's going on. I don't hate you, but this is what we're dealing with here. Brothers are saying it's a bit different elsewhere. Why not? Why not go? I'm, um, if you go to Africa and you find the same thing, then you leave that part of Africa too. I'm not going to say leave the continent. It's too big. It's too varied. It's too diverse. But I'm going to say that if you go to a particular part of Africa and you find the same mindset, you leave it. If you go to a particular part of Latin America and you find that same mindset, you leave it. If you go to a particular part of Asia and find that same concept, you leave it. You bounce. You fit the guck out. It does not matter. Wherever you were judged by Lois Lane standards that have been spoiled by a Superman or the image of a Superman on TV or just a refusal to accept the humanity of Clark Kent and God's promise to test each other, you bounce. Because when a woman demands that you be God to make her happy, you're never going to be able to make her happy. That's it. When a woman says, I will only be happy with a God and not with a man, she ain't going to be happy. End of story. And understand this too, gentlemen, if you went and made yourself into some kind of Superman somehow to make them happy, realize that when you get sick and tired of flying in and swooping in to save them from themselves and you start saying to them, now I've saved you, you're going to follow my lead so that you won't be in the situation ever again. She's going to look at you and say, oh, you talking like a leader now. Hold the F up. Where is my kryptonite? She's going to start looking around and that kryptonite will either be in the form of her male relative with a gun or in the form of three numbers 911. I hope that this message is a benefit and that it helps you out. I hope one day this message won't be necessary anymore. Until then, may it help you. May God help you. May God help us all. Black Heart Sign of Blackout. Assalamu alaikum.